Hello, welcome to Talks Me Tuesday, Season 2, Episode 15. So today's topic is Adopted Insecurities. We're going to go over all the different insecurities that we develop over time that are passed down to us, that are forced onto us, that are, um, you know you know, forced upon us and placed upon us and different um, factors in the world that are giving us these insecurities that we're developing over time that we are not born with, that we do not initially have an issue with. Things about us, ourselves, personally, that um, outside of the opinions of others, we may or may not even see as an issue. So I definitely, definitely want to thank you guys all for being here. I'm going to give people a a few moments to go ahead and join. Take your time, take your time. How's everybody's summer? I know that y'all see today's the first day of summer. I think it's tomorrow. But anyway, I know y'all see me looking like a little honey ham. I'm so dark. So I didn't wear makeup today because now my makeup doesn't match me because I'm like a lot darker than I normally am. Um, I was away with my family and things over um, this past week. I was on vacation. So hence why I'm dark and I look like a chocolate frosted donut. But um. So, come on, come on, come on. Um, How's everybody's week so far? Happy Tuesday. Happy June. Middle of June. How are you guys doing? How are you liking the show? Um, If any of you guys are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, If you're new to Talk To Me Tuesday and this is your first episode watching, I appreciate it. Welcome. All of my episodes previously are uploaded On Facebook, for my Facebook people, you can go to my page and to all of my videos. For my Instagram people or even my Facebook people, if you have problems finding the videos, all of my videos are also uploaded on my YouTube channel. So you can just search Just Jocelyn, all one word, together, J-U-S-T-J-O-C-E-L-Y-N. And if you search my name on on, uh, YouTube, you will find me and all of my um, previous episodes. So you can binge watch, catch up, watch some of your favorite episodes that you've seen before and you want to watch again or whatever. Um, also, just a little, of course, housekeeping. Um, keep in mind that if you ever have any type of topic suggestions, questions, comments, concerns, ideas for me, you're more than welcome to um, comment below any of my videos, any of my comments. You can inbox me. You can DM me. Um, you also can email me at justjocelynmedia at gmail.com website coming soon so it's a lot 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 going on but if you need to get in touch with me or if you have anything that you want to say or anything like that i'm here i'm available i'm around so just you know use those different methods and outlets to get in touch with me so boom moving forward welcome to today's show and we're going to get it going so welcome everybody so like i said i wanted to talk about um the the reason that i titled the show adopted insecurities and not just insecurities or anything like that is because there there's a method behind where i'm going with that i feel that a lot of the insecurities that we have as humans as individuals as adults even as children you know i'll say teenagers are forced upon us they're they're all adopted based on what is the ideal norm or you know if we're talking about your body shape and if you have an insecurity with and sorry i'm outside trying to catch some breeze but clearly i'm not in the best scenario situation so we got the sirens hope you guys can still hear me if you have any issues hearing me just give me a thumbs down or something but other than that i'll try to speak up so you guys can hear me but i feel like a lot of the insecurities that we have personally are all developed based on outside input and outside sources that are giving off the impression that we are not or something that we have or something about us is is not great is not okay is not to be proud of is not something to need that needs to change so i don't want to say society in general but more so it's just adapted over time it kind of gives off the impression that this is not okay so, I want to start by, basically, um, the other day, I was at the beach with, um, with my girlfriend and my family, and I um, saw some kids playing, and it really struck a nerve to me, because kids, like, little children, like, I'm talking about three and four-year-olds, one, two, three-year-olds, like, they really just do whatever. They really do whatever they want. Like, they just move around, they play, they get dirty, they roll around on the floor, they pull your hair, they scream, make random outbursts, but they enjoy themselves. And I feel like, 
I had a sense of envy for the children. And it's just like, okay, that's weird. How are you jealous or envious of children? But it really was a sense of envy. And it's just like, as an adult, as a 31-year-old woman that has an audience and that has friends and family members and people looking at them and children of her own and, you know, just people that look up to me, people that, that hate me, people that are talking about me. I kind of had an, an, a, a moment of envy of those little children, those four and five year olds playing on the beach so carefree. So I just feel like that's something that I, I try to incorporate with my just be you. They're going to fuck with it. They, I just feel like that, that really needs to be a thing that us as adults, we don't have the luxury of just being ourselves. And as, as much as, and I can be honest, even me with that being something that I strive to live by on a daily basis, it still becomes very difficult. It's very um, strenuous and tumultuous at times because there's things that I do want to do that I, even if I do something, most of the things I do, I, I typically, in a nutshell, I do what I want. I do do what I want, however, I can admit that I take time to consider the thoughts of others to consider the judgment of the next person to consider how is this going to look oh my god people are going to think i'm crazy or somebody going to say something all of those things that's considered not doing what you want you know you're second guessing yourself you're second guessing your own ideas you're second guessing your own human nature you're second guessing the things that you want to do solely based on the opinions or the the potential opinions or likes or dislikes or judgments of others. And with that, that is considered an insecurity. You're, you're double checking on yourself. You're being unsure of yourself solely based on what some, someone may feel or may think or may say. So, like I said, I can admit that I do that in myself. And I'm sure that if any of you guys, you know, take the time to consider, you're, all, you're doing the same thing as well. So, anytime you have an idea, it's just like, oh, I should go bungee jumping. Or, oh, I should wear this see-through shirt with my nipples out. And it's just like, anytime you like, I want to do that. And it's like, uh, that uh moment, whatever, whether it's a split second, millisecond, 30 seconds, two days, you buy something and you try it on and you're like no what's my boyfriend going to say or what's my mom going to say or what the people at my job going to say and what if somebody see me at the store that work with me and all of that all of those extra thoughts all of those additional sub thoughts is now you not being you not you're not able to stay true to yourself if you are a person that wants to wear you in your heart you want to wear a see through top with your nipples out and you feel like you will be comfortable with that just as far as, okay, how do I look? How do I feel? And you feel like you will be comfortable with that and you don't do it solely based on, mm, somebody's going to say something. Mm, this person's not going to like it. Then you are now officially second-guessing yourself and you have developed an insecurity within yourself that you didn't originally have. Because the reality is you feel fine with how you look. I feel like I look real good. Fuck it. Oh, well. But once you start to consider those things, then that's where the issues come in. So I, I, I just want to stress that those are things that, again, are adopted over time. Those are insecurities that have been now forced on you. At what point did it become an issue or a thing that, oh, you can't wear a seat through? Or, oh, you have to be a certain size? Or, oh, if you're a parent, you have to dress this way? Or... Oh, if you're in a relationship, you have to dress this way. Or, oh, if you're educated, you have to talk like this and hang with these people and go to these places. All of those things are adopted as securities. If you feel like when you're at your job or when you're speaking with your coworkers, then you can't speak the same way you do to your friends. Now, we're not going to say don't be professional or I don't want you guys to take this to level 25. We're going to be realistic about things. But if you really have to put on a whole new face or a whole new personality, or a whole new voice, or a whole new act. Like, if you have to prepare to talk to somebody, or if you have to prepare yourself to be in each situation, then you're not being true to yourself. Because although a lot of us are adaptable, and we can be in different situations, and we can fit in, and we can be chameleons, and we have that adjustability factor where it's just like, I can kind of, any situation anybody going to be with it. You know what I mean? I, I can fit in. I can speak. I can dress. I can act. And I can 
project myself in a manner in which I need to, then that's all you need. But once you feel like you have to, okay, I have to, perfect example, you feel like you have to wear certain clothes when you're going to meet certain family members opposed to, all right, when I go out with my cousins, I'm just going to like wear a little short dress, some high heels. But, oh, if I go around my aunt that's real churchy, I'm going to wear my button-up shirt with the, why? If, if any other day of the week, I would probably have one a mini skirt and some high heels that I'm wearing. Thank you. I'm wearing my same mini skirt and high heels there. Like, why do I have to go out of my, outside of myself to find this one button-up shirt that I only wear when I'm either going to a job interview or when I'm about to meet your ass? That's not fair. It's not fair to you because you're not getting the real me. At some point, like, you're missing out. You're missing out on who I really am. Shout out to myself for the water. Excuse me. But, yeah, so it's just like you're missing out on who I really am. And then I'm, it's not fair to me because now I have to go out of my way to be somebody different. And I don't think that we understand or that we take into consideration how much we do this. How many different scenarios or situations or insecurities we have allowed society to inflict on us. How many um, insecurities that we have adopted based on Instagram. Facebook, social media, celebrity status. We look at celebrities and look at their bodies and everybody done been to Dr. Miami and this and this and that. And you see Nicki Minaj or Kim Kardashian or K. Michelle or any of And their bodies look perfect. And now it's just like that is the idea of perfect. It's just like, okay, if you don't have this size breast, this size waist, this size hips, this size ass thing, you are not popping period that's not up for debate this is not something that we're going to go back and forth about that is a fact in 2017 that is a thing that is the ideal body shape for most people even as far as models now it used to be most models had to be 120 pounds or less they had to be five nine or above now it's just like okay you gotta have a small waist nice hips like depending on what situation you're in so that's something that's been adopted over time. Now, that is the insecurity that's now been forced on you, forced on me. I can admit for myself, it's something that's been forced on me. I've always been a little bit on the thick side. I've always had nice size breasts. I always wear a push-up bra. I ain't ashamed. Fucking right. I want my titties to sit up. I'm not fucking 13 and they don't poke out like this. They are down and I got two kids and I want them to sit up at attention looking nice. So, yes, okay, I'll wear a push-up bra. But then when we get into, okay, well, Jocelyn, you've always had a nice size, but okay, well, thank you. But now it's just like, well, if my stomach isn't a certain amount, if my stomach isn't this flat and my waist isn't this small, then my big butt don't even matter now. Now I'm not even in back in the day, and I ain't that damn old. But I can say a good 10 years ago, when I was in high school, my body was the shit. I was the ideal body shape and not to say that I want anybody to have insecurities based on my body shape I'm just saying I was more comfortable with myself years ago than I am now and I don't look that much different granted I've gained a little bit of weight but it's really adopted insecurities that I feel like I've developed over time based on the things that are around me you know if you have um like I said, we, we definitely all look up to the celebrities no matter who you are or whether you want to say that you don't you try not to, and it's just like, oh, I don't look up to her, and I don't care. We've all had, especially as women, and I'll get to the fellas in a moment, but especially as women, we've all had those moments where we're just like, uh, I wish my stomach was a little bit flatter. I wish my ass was a little bit fatter. I wish my waist was a little bit smaller. Like, do you have those moments. I wish my boobs were a little bit bigger. I'm going to get a boob job. I'm going to get some lipo. I'm going to get a BBL. I'm, you know, we've had that issue all the way down to wearing weave. Now, granted, yes, my hair is short. I've worn my hair short for quite some time now, but I used to wear weave, and there's a lot of females out here, we're wearing weave, that in itself is an insecurity. Why are you not proud of your hair? If you only got this much fucking hair, then bitch, be proud. If you want to relax it, relax it. Because even with that, that's the thing. Like, it's so many adopting insecurities, you can't even wear a relaxer, and that's just like, oh, if you're going to wear short hair, then bitch, be natural. You need to either be a natural girl, it's like either you're a natural girl, or you're a weave glamazon. There's no in-between. If you got no hair, you know what I mean? You got to have short hair like mine. You can't just be walking around with no little nappy-ass bush right here if it ain't glossed up and coiled up and you ain't got the baby hairs down here. All those little things 
that you may just think is normal and it's just like, oh, that's just the style. No, that's an insecurity. If you want to just wash your hair and wear a wet and go and your hair is not the same curl pattern as the girls that you see on HealthyHairJourney.com or, you know, whatever these fucking magazines, then now you don't feel as confident to wear your hair out. You feel like, oh, you got to get the gel out and the toothbrush. It didn't used to do all that before. If you're wearing a fucking afro, wear a damn afro. If you want to, you know what I mean? If you want to relax your hair, relax your hair. People make you feel bad for getting a relaxer. Oh, you get relaxers? Uh-huh, girl, I don't do perms. Like, that's just not good. People have been wearing perms for 50 years or more. Honestly, yeah. I've been kind of talking. I have a degree. I should probably go and clarify on my dates. But, yeah, so that's been a thing. And I, I can say that all of those little things, that's a big deal. It's all, and I am pointing out the little things because I want you guys to understand how deep rooted these insecurities have been adopted and forced upon us. Because small things like how do you wear your hair, it's all based on what everybody else is doing. And I can admit, yes, my hair is short, but if my hair is not dye and you see more than 30% black or brown or whatever my natural hair color is, uh, I need to do my hair. I won't go the fuck outside. I will wear a hat. I will wear a scarf. I will do whatever. I see girls walking around all day long. They have a whole fresh ass outfit on. Put a scarf on. Well, what's going on with the fuck underneath your hair? I think people do that as a style. Well, everybody else is doing it, so what I'm going to have my hair out for? No, like all of those things is just not okay. You feel like you have to dress a certain type of way if you're looking to get somebody. And then once you have somebody, then it's just like, okay, I have to calm this down. So that's the thing in itself. It's just like, well, am I insecure about my body shape? Am I insecure about the type of clothes that I wear? I, I can admit, again, I'll go to myself. I don't want to force my insecurities on you guys. But I'll admit that I had a, a point in time when I cut my hair and was dating females that I it's certain things that I just won't wear even now it's certain things that I just won't wear because I have an insecurity of looking like a boy or people mistaking me for a boy or people thinking I'm a bull dyke or whatever the fuck people say and names that people use and obscenities that no it's not okay but I can I have to admit yes that matters to me I don't want nobody calling me that I don't want people to think that I'm trying to be a boy or anything like that shout out to all the lesbians or butches or whatever I'm not throwing shade but me personally as a female with short hair, I have an insecurity about dressing a certain way. I try not to dress like a boy, but I like to be comfortable. It's a lot of things that I want to fit. I am a little hippie. I'm got a lot of thick thighs. I don't want to wear tight ass clothes every fucking day. I can't wear super, super short shit every day because my butt sticks out and I don't want my butt out. I can't wear hipsters because I don't want my butt crack out. Like all of those things, that's all the thing. Now I'm outside, so I got flies and shit. And I'm sorry, I don't know what that was. But it landed on me and scared the shit out of me. But, you know, so I had those insecurities. Just like, well, I want to be sexy. I want to be sexy when people see me. I want people to think I'm attractive. I want my girlfriend to think I'm sexy. So I want to get dressed, but then it's just like, I don't feel like it. But that in itself is an insecurity. It's just like, okay, well, if I'm chilling too hard and I'm, you know, people going to think I'm dirty or people don't think going to think I don't have no clothes or people don't going to think I don't know how to dress. I, I don't. I dress how I want to dress. I'm very plain. If I could wear a t-shirt like this and a different pair of jeans every day and a pair of sneakers or even a pair of shoes or whatever, that's all I would do. The makeup thing, honestly, I do most of my makeup for you guys. And I haven't worn makeup in like three shows back to back. But that's just because it's not my thing. I don't hate makeup, but it's not my everyday. But there are people out here that feel like they have to wear makeup every single day. You got to paint your eyebrows on. I mean... Listen, if you one of those people that took it upon yourself to shave your eyebrows off or put some nair on your eyebrows and now you want to draw them on every morning for 45 minutes, more power to you. But that's not fair. You shouldn't have to go through all of that just so you can go outside and go to the corner store just because everybody else is brows on fleek. No, you, you don't want to do that. You late to work every goddamn day because you're trying to paint your fucking eyebrows on or because you're trying to beat your face down. It's, it's, it's just not fair. It's not okay. And I just feel like people need to, you know, if, if you are learned to accept what your insecurities are and a, at least acknowledge them, then at some point, then you can go ahead and start to be comfortable within yourself. And maybe one day, wishful thinking, we'll get back to a time or, you know, as a society as a whole where people are comfortable with being themselves. Because me personally, looking from, I don't even want to say from the outside looking in because... I'm still in the mix, just like everybody else. 
But most people that wear makeup, everybody's makeup looks the same. I said this on one of my previous shows. I feel like everybody's eyebrows has the same shape. Everybody's contour looks the same. Everybody's face is trying to look like Kim Kardashian. I don't want to contour my face. I've been, again, I have a cosmetology license. I know that different face shapes are supposed to have different contours. And I feel like everybody... When I see all these makeup tutorials and all these pictures and everybody's doing they self, everybody got the same contour, everybody got this, highlight, glossy face, like everybody don't want to look the same. That's why I've never gotten my makeup done professionally. I do it myself because it's just like, that's fine. Whatever I want to look like is fine. I just want to even my skin out, a little bit of lash stuff, and that's it. But when you have... When I can pull 20 girls and line them up, literally, and you guys can agree, disagree. If you disagree, go do the research. I bet you if you go to your Instagram right now or to your Facebook right now, scroll down your timeline and pick up the first 20 ladies that you see. Most of them look, I would say at least, at least 11 of them have the same look, the ideal look. The makeup is typically the same. The brows look like this. They got lashes or mascara. They got the contour face, the highlight glossy thing right here. They got the nude lip or the matte lip or the glossy pink lip or whatever. They got the lace front wig or the frontal wig or they have the curly wavy hair or they got the middle part, side part, long black hair or maybe some color hair. Got some type of Fashion Nova outfit or get the look outfit or whatever. And that's it. Now, I'm not throwing shade to any of those people, but how the hell are you trying to be an individual and look like everybody else? There's no reason that out of 20 bitches, 11 of them should look the same. Now, they might, they might be different renditions of shades of melanin, but they all look the fucking same. And that's not okay. So that, to me, is clearly an adopted insecurity. You feel like if you're, if you're not meeting these criteria, then you're not, you're not popping. That's not the look. Everybody does the same thing. Everybody wears the same shit. What's up? I, I just don't understand. Um, I also wanted to touch on some other things because... So, I want people to also understand that insecurity is not just about how you look. Everybody's insecurity is not based on, oh, I think I'm fat. Oh, I'm too skinny. Oh, I'm too tall. Oh, I'm too this. Oh, I'm too dark. Oh, I'm too light. Oh, my eyes is too big. Oh, my teeth got a gap. Oh, I need to whiten my teeth. Oh, I need to get another air pierce. Oh, I need to get this off my arms. Oh, I need to get rid of my stretch marks. Oh, like, no. It's not always about your appearance. A lot of people have deeper rooted insecurities that stem from their personality. A lot, a lot of people, so many people have insecurities about their personality and they they go about life being somebody that they're not like most people really it's so many people and and i just want to i don't want to say give a moment of silence but my heart goes out to anybody that's watching this today or if you know anybody that is out here living a life in in solace like where they're like in such a shelter or in hold of themselves like they put on such a front such a persona and they're so this or so that negative or positive but they're hiding behind something so when i say that i mean so when i what i mean when i say that is when you have somebody you ever meet somebody that's real loud like a female or a guy that's real loud like they real joe we call it joe if you if you're from philly you, you know what Joe means. Like, just hype. you all over the place. You're always talking to everybody or whatever. You're doing the most. And it's just like they all over the place and they loud. They want to be the center of attention everywhere they go. They kind of just force themselves upon people. It's just like, hey, y'all done it. Like, and they just extra as shit. And it's just like, dog, calm the fuck down. Why are you so hype? So we have two people in this insecure ass situation. Because the person that's overextending themselves probably is the most ashamed of who they are and they use their personality or you know or lack thereof to kind of be and make a fool of themselves to hide their insecurities to hide the fact that oh they might be ugly nine times out of ten and i hope i don't offend anybody but nine times out of ten a really 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 joe person or hype person or really annoying overzealous extra gregorous type of person is probably not the most attractive which is how they still end up getting people i know a whole lot of guys that 
especially when I was in high school, child, they wasn't lookers at all. But they were so funny and always had the jokes and this, this, and that. So people do that to overcompensate. But it's still, we still have to address it as an insecurity. You're insecure about your looks, so you overcompensate with being, you know, making a fool out of yourself more so before somebody else can make a fool out of you. Before anybody gets a chance to bust on you, I'm going to come here and I'm going to make all these jokes and laugh and smile and be hype and whatever. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's you're still hiding something. Then we have the girls that are beautiful, beautiful girls, beautiful in the face. They all made up, dressed up, this, this, and that. And they walk through the party and they don't talk to nobody. And they sit, you know, you can't sit with us, Mean Girls Club. And we all over here and we ain't dancing, we ain't talking, we ain't got no time. We taking selfies on our fucking Snapchats and we playing with our hair and we fixing our brows and we doing our little lip stuff. And that's it. The prettiest bitches. I don't want to call them bitches. But the prettiest people. Not even just females. But males as well. The prettiest people have the most insecurities. They are the ones that go home. And take all the makeup off. And cry in the mirror. Because nobody likes them. Because their fucking personality sucks. Because all they have is their looks. So it's just like I'm so pretty. So I know people are going to draw to me. Because of how I look. Or I'm so handsome and my muscles are so big. Or I'm so sexy and my skin is dark chocolate and all of that. So people are going to gravitate to me because I am an attractive person. But those people as well, they they have, they have go home and they're upset that they, they don't have any personality. They don't have any real friends. Most of those people, it's hard for them to find love because no, they, they can't tell who's there for real or who's not. Because they never get a chance to show their personality because all they have is their looks. They're like a... A beautiful outside shell. This is like a pretty ass Corvette fucking um, casing. It's just like you're a shell. You're beautiful on the outside, but you have absolutely nothing on the inside. You're like empty. And that one in itself is an insecurity. A lot of people just are not comfortable with their level of intelligence. You know, they 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 kind of draw to the back, like kind of like a turtle going into the shell when they're. Um, you know, in, in situations or in mixed company where there are people that are, you know, have a higher level of intelligence or a significant level of intelligence. It doesn't even necessarily have to be better, but sometimes people are just don't want to be around people that are smarter than them because they feel like they're dumb. If you feel like you're dumb, then you're going to hang around the dumbest people. So if you see a group of people and they all dumb as shit, you got to try to... <laughs> Pick through whichever one looks the smartest or acts the smartest or talks the most, then they're really not that smart either. They're just trying to go into a situation where they feel like, you know, where they can be up instead of drawn to the background and being the dumbest person. Everybody wants to be the smartest person. Who doesn't? So those those things like that are insecurities as well. Some people, um, a lot of people, like I said, I envied the children earlier. A lot of people, we call it hating these days, but most people hate on you if you're that pretty girl or if you're that intelligent person or if you're that sexy, strong guy or if you're that hardworking man. Most people hate on you that anybody that gives you negative feedback or negative judgment, they're envying you as well because something about you, everything that you are is what they're not. You know, there. If, if you're that guy that's going to work every day and providing for his family and still with his baby mom and married to his high school sweetheart and got two kids and you work a regular little job at, I don't fucking know, IBM and you got a nice job and you got a nice little car and you living a regular degular schmegular life and then you got your homeboys that you might have grew up with or went to college with or whatever and they're giving you so much slack like, damn dog, you don't never come out and da 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 and you, you know what I mean? You whack and what happened to you? You used to be old dog. And th they wish they had your life. Like they're strong, so envious of you at this time. Like they wish they had a woman to come home to every night. Kids to call them daddy and play with them or whatever the case. And somebody to cook them meals and lay with at night. And you know, just having that security opposed to going out every single night. And you got to figure out which one of your chicks you're going to see tonight. Because all these chicks is all over the place and they for the people. All of those things, you know, that's an insecurity within themselves. So when somebody tries to push an insecurity on you or try to make you feel bad about your situation, you have to remember the, the fact that the matter is the nine times out of ten, they want what you have. 
So a lot of these insecurities that's been forced upon us are are stemmed and brewed and constructed from jealousy and from envy. You know, even down to, and I'm not going to get there into the race thing, but even a lot of, you know, the insecurities that we face as African Americans, or I'll say that I face as an African American, because everybody on here may or may not be, but, you know, that society has placed on us, you know, we say the man, the white man, the, you know, the white people or whatever, they have made us feel this way. You know, but look at how many, you know, look at how things have changed around. We're so busy trying to get straight hair, long hair, and be lighter. And they're trying to be darker, get bigger butts, and get thicker, curlier, coarser hair. You know, bigger lips and bigger noses. And we're trying to slim our shit down and slim this down and get smaller and not be busty and not be thick and... So it's, it's all the same thing. It's just like it's all being forced upon you. It's not even a thing. It's just their jealousy and, and it just becomes more powerful than your strength. And that's where it comes down to. You have to let your pride and your strength and your confidence within yourself be stronger than the jealousy and envy that is out there. You know, from the people and places around you, from the society that we live in. It's just like, you have have got to have a strong sense of self. This is not an, about being cocky. This is not about being conceited. Or this is not about thinking you the best or thinking you decent, thinking you all that. But there comes a time when your sense of self and your sense of pride in yourself has got to be at a very significant level in order to make it in this world because you will continuously and consistently find yourself in situations where you're always changing because times change, things change, fads change, trends change and if all you're doing is trying to keep up with that keep up with the times, keep up with the Joneses, keep up with what's popping then you'll never know who you are. You'll never get a chance to be you because you're so busy trying to be whatever else is going on or whatever else is out there or whatever. You're trying to be everybody else. You're If you're trying to be, you know, um, and again, I don't want to necessarily keep for, talking about looks, but if you're just trying to be the it girl, if you're trying to be the dope boy, if you're trying to be the popping person, then you're never going to be you, whoever you are. Because the reality is, if you're popping, then you're popping. If you ain't, then you ain't. It, that's not going to matter, but pop into who? That's where the question comes in. Well, pop into who? What, what is the definition of popping? Who makes the guidelines of what's decent? Who makes the guidelines of what's good, what's bad? You know, it, it all is about how you feel about yourself. Now, if you feel like there's something internally that you do not like about yourself, whether it's, you know, it's about your appearance, it's about your character, it's about your personality, any of your characteristics, any of your traits, any of your bad habits. If there's an issue that you have within yourself, I suggest that you take some time and identify it and work on it. But do not allow any outside source of any sort, person, place, thing, media, celebrity, idea, magazine, anything then turn around and tell you what's not right about you. Only you can tell yourself what's not right about you. If you look in the mirror every day and feel like your body is fine, then your body's fine. If you look in the mirror every day and it's just like, I'm kind of over this, this fat shit. I'm over it. I am over it. Not, oh my God, I think my girlfriend thinks I'm fat. Not, oh my God, this person was looking at my stomach the other day. Not, oh my God, I can't shop at fucking Fashion Nova because I don't look like the Fashion Nova model bitches. No, but if you look in the mirror and say, I'm over being fat. I don't, I just don't want to do this no more. I'm over it. I, I just, I don't. Then, that's when you should make a move. Because the reality is, if you do it for any other reason, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be into it. The passion is not going to be there. You may or may not be successful in your, you know, in your results, but you're not going to be happy because you're still going to be just like, okay, now you're going to find something else wrong with yourself based on outside sources. Because if the outside source is the only thing that you have to define or determine your flaws, you'll always it'll be always something wrong with you. There's always something. Society will point something out. You no no two people are the same. So no matter how much you contour, how many lace fronts you wear, and all of that, 
whatever the case, if you are using an outside source to determine what it is about you or, you know, if that defines you, then you're always going to be at a loss. You're always going to be one step behind. If you follow trends, you're always going to be one step behind because you ain't going to find out about the shit till you see a picture of it on somebody or till you see somebody with it, which means you're already one person behind because somebody already got it. It's already out there on Instagram. It's already been on the Explore page. So 30 other bitches seen it the same time you did and 2,500 people seen it before you did. So now it's just like, well, you, now you behind. Now you trying to play catch up. And you'll always be one step behind. But if you stay true to you and be you and worry about what you got going on and how you feel about you, how you feel about how you look, how you want to dress, how you want to look, how you want to wear your hair, how you want to talk, how you want to act, how you want to manage yourself. Period. Then, you know, if you stay, stay true to that, then you will always you know what i mean you'll have insecurities that are in your within yourself they won't you won't be ad continuing to adopt these insecurities you don't want to necessarily do that you want to have anything that you have an issue with be solely based on you and your personal experience your personal feelings about yourself not based on any outside any outside characteristics any outside influences you know the the, the society should, should not influence you at all. And I feel like the goal today or the goal for today's show and for me bringing up this topic is simply because I would just like for us as a people to, to strive to be ourselves. And I understand how hard that may be for so many people based on the influences that are out there, based on the, the factors that we face, based on the things that we see and do and hear and witness on a regular basis. It's not, it's not easy to stay true to oneself. It's not easy to just be yourself because it is so many, so many different factors to show you why you should be like this and why you should be like that. And this person is rich and this person got a lot of money and this person is so sexy and this person gets a lot of girls. So if you do this, if you drive this type of car, then you'll be popping. If you, you know, and you'll get girls. And if you do this, then you'll get more money. And so it's so many outside reasons why we shouldn't be ourselves. But we need to look back into ourselves and figure out what is it that you love about yourself? What is it that you're proud of that maybe some other people don't like and just take into consideration that they may or may not like those things because there is an envy and you know what we all have our insecurities we all have different issues none of us are perfect we're all aware that you know we no two people are the same so if you keep that mindset and you keep understanding that you and tt and jj and man man and wawa and Tamika and Shaniqua and all y'all are not supposed to look the same. Y'all are not supposed to act the same. Y'all are not supposed to talk the same. It's just not meant to be like that. We don't live in the cookie cutter world. You shouldn't want to be a cookie cutter person. Trends are fine when you're looking for something to wear and what's popping, but be yourself. Because anytime once you get out of that, then you will all you will never get a chance to know you. You will never get a chance to know yourself, let alone other people to get to know you. You'll never get a chance to display who you really are and how you really are and you'll never get a good understanding and you'll be 50 60 years old just trying to figure out who am i what do i like i don't even know what i like because i've been all these years trying to just keep up with what's been going on i've just been going with the flow and doing what everybody else do i don't even i don't even like kenny <laughs> you know something as simple as okay well everybody around me drinking ciroc so let me drink ciroc and i don't even like that shit or, you know, come to find out, I don't even really like lace wigs. I don't like long hair. I really don't even like hair on my neck. So I think I might want to cut my hair off and wear it short and orange or whatever. You know, whatever you decide. But I, I, I just say that to say, if you just try to stay true to you, then you, you can't go wrong. There is no right or wrong when you're talking about yourself. When you're trying to keep up with people, then that's when people say, Oh, no, no, honey, what's not to wear, and that's not okay, and you don't look right. But if you stick with, you know, what you want to do, then nobody can tell you it's right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. There's only one you, and there's only one way. 
There's only one way to be you. Nobody else can tell you how to be you. Nobody else can give you any information on how to be you. Only you can answer that. So I just want you guys to all dig, dig deep, figure out what it is that you don't like about you. If there is something that you want to change about yourself, then I think that you should just take the time and try to do it. However, if it's something that you've been criticized about or you've been judged about and you feel like all these other outside sources have made you feel inadequate or you know if you have people around you that are making you feel unattractive unsexy dumb stupid unimportant or whatever remove yourself and just dig deep and focus on yourself and just try to determine what it is that you need to do for you to make you feel better about your situation if there's anything that you want to change about you then get to it other than that fuck what everybody think just be you they gonna fuck with it i love you guys i'm ending the show early thank you everybody for watching this will definitely be up on youtube after the show love you guys good night Mwah. Mwah.